Zoom. And for those of you here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. Okay, so we begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still and close your eyes as we play the God's the love that I am chant. You may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to the mantra, God's the love that I am.
And so, as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you here virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Let's join together in prayer. It's so wonderful to know, so we are so blessed to know that God is in this place. There isn't anywhere that God is not. And we are reminded that every day, in every way, from nature to joy to laughter to whatever it is that we feel, whatever it is that we see, whatever, we are reminded every day, knowing that God is all there is. And I, I'm so grateful to know that I am part of this, that I too am part of God. I too am love, am joy. That the beauty, that the, the creator has made such beauty and I am it as well. And I know that we all are. I believe this, I know this, this is the truth of my being. And being that is so, I can speak my word with absolute faith and confidence in the knowing that this service is blessed. This service is blessed because we are all here as one, as one of, as one of what we all rejoice to be, and that is knowing that God within us expresses itself fully. So I know that Reverend Sidney expresses that for us today. And we hear it, we know it, we take it home with us, we live it, we're excited about it. We can't wait to go home and say what we heard tonight. Whether it was the words, it was the music, it was whatever it was, the lateness of the service, we wanna, we, we're gonna rejoice in whatever that is and we are going to love. And because I'm so grateful for this love, for this truth, for this knowing, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I release my word into this perfect law. It is already done, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Let's recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We are one. 
We are one. We are all one in God. We are love. We are love. We are all the love of God. In It was so sacred. It was so beautiful. Oh, welcome, everybody. So glad you're here. I'm Reverend Sydney. Years ago, I remember being in my car. I had one of those things that, that NPR and public radio calls a, um, a driveway moment. I think that's what they call it, where you pull into your driveway and you're in the midst of a story, and it's so compelling that you can't bear to turn off your car because you want to hear how the rest of it goes. And so the story was um, about this man who was getting ready to retire um, from the post office. And he was a mail carrier in, in one of the suburbs of Buffalo, New York. And he was so loved and so praised. His, his root, people loved him so much. And as they were talking with him, they said, what is it that you know, makes you so special? What is it that makes you different? Because we hear stories about how this one woman who's older had not been out to get her mail in a long time, and you realize something might be wrong, and you were the one who alerted authorities, and she was taken, and taken to the hospital, and she was healed. You know, she, was, she was loved, and she had fallen, and so she was able to, to get back to her life because he was the one who noticed this. And if he saw that somebody wasn't feeling well, he made sure that they were loved, that they got flowers, that they, whatever it was, he was this special, special man. And so they were honoring him as he was preparing to retire. 
And so the interviewer said, well, tell me about your experience. How did this all come about? And he said, well, I was a young man, and I, I had plans to be a musician. That was my, my dream, my goal. And the life of a musician, um, when you're just like really breaking into an industry, can be rather challenging. And not known for being um, a wealthy kind of career at first. You know, those of us who have walked that walk know that there are the, the gigs you do for free, there are the gigs you do for next to free, and there, then there are the gigs that you pay to do. And he was in that boat. And his girlfriend, whom he loved very dearly, realized, discovered one day she was pregnant. And so his whole life changed because now he needed to support her, to support her as their baby was going to be born. And I believe that she also had another child. And so there was this whole thing. Suddenly he was going to become a family man and have to take care of this family. And it was so not what he wanted to do. And he said, I was angry. I was resentful. I was frustrated. I found this job with the post office department, which was great because it meant I was able to you know, kind of be there when she needed me and it stayed in the neighborhood, but suddenly I was having to give up this dream of what I wanted. And he said, I realized after a long while of doing this, um, and for him, long mile, while was probably a year, two years, and he was just miserable that at a certain point, he said, I realized that with the family, with the baby, with the other child, with all of the responsibilities, I had a decision to make, I had a choice. And if I couldn't get out of it, I had to get into it. And I went, whoa, if you can't get out of it, get into it. He said, so that became my, my mindset, my mantra. I can't get out of it, I'm gonna have to get into it. And so he did, and he fully dove into this experience of being the best he could be in these roles. And it began to blossom for him as he moved from this place of frustration and cynicism and anger and resentment into a place of praise, into a place of being the best, doing his best, bringing his best into this role. And it, he flourished and loved it. His purpose was so profoundly clear to him that he was there Male was, was the outline, but to be there for people and to love them was his purpose and was his meaning. If you can't get out of it, get into it. So this has stayed with me for all of these years because what I know is when dissatisfaction is front and center in your thinking, in my thinking, then the result is more dissatisfaction and I dare say, more to be dissatisfied about. Anybody have that experience, right? But what if we started, like intentionally started to shift our attention such that our energy is, is not feeding our frustration, but instead is feeding our sense of purpose and possibility? What if we make that shift? What if we began to break that, the rote habit of complaining and worrying and moved into a place instead of curiosity, of curiosity? You know, sometimes we think we have to, when we hear, especially around new thought traditions and churches and centers, that we have to change our thinking so we can change our life. But it's, it's not like strictly binary. We don't go from all is awful to all is fabulous because that's what we like to call a spiritual bypass and you're lying to yourself. And we all are very capable of, well, I'm capable of doing that. So it is not about that. You know, because there's something so weirdly reassuring about having that list of stuff that, um, that's not working. Right, we all have our list of stuff. And our culture, particularly here in LA, seems to really enjoy getting behind the problems, the blame, the snark, the anger, the cynicism. And by the way, Martin Luther King Jr. said that cynicism is the refuge of the coward. So just file that one away in your hip pocket when you're tempted to be cynical. But it, all of those things can so 
a company, so easily a company, a systematic mindset of negativity and criticism and complaining, right? And I like the science of mind for so, I love science of mind for so many reasons, but I think that the big reason is that the law of cause and effect always, always, always works in integrity with itself. It works in integrity with, her, with itself. So there are two quotes that come to my mind, and this happens frequently. And the first one comes from Jesus the teacher. And he, he said, it is done unto us as we believe. And that's what we work with. That is what we work with. It is done unto us as we believe. And the second quote that he taught, and it actually was originally in the Old Testament, was that which you have feared has come upon you. Right? So actually that quote was from Job, who was a hot mess, by the way. He really, really was. He loved to complain. He is our, our icon, our standard for worry and for complaining, negative thinking. His friends, if you, if you look at the stories, and if you look at it metaphysically, which is how I choose to look at it, they, he had three friends who kept trying to induce him, cultivate him, encourage him, inspire him into thinking differently. But it took a lot to get him into considering other possibilities. He ignored them. And you know, his wife was even more of a hot mess than he was. Um, when she was told not to look back, we all know the story, she turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> and what that means is that whether or not we like it, whether or not we think it's fair, our lives will always reflect our beliefs and our habitual thinking. So now think about that. It's so much easier to put the blame for our lives or the responsibility, all of that outside of ourselves. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun, but it's actually really not because our opportunity is to recognize and to become curious about our own thinking, to really become curious. Our opportunity is to look at what is happening in our lives and without shame or blame or finger pointing or angst or any of that or rage, begin to get curious about Wow, how did this show up? <laughs> did I have anything to do with this? Is there something that I might have had? Have I played a role in my own life, right? We need to ask how our lives have gotten to be the way they are. Now, it's not to say that everything in our lives and that people who come here are all, are, are all hot messes and trying to figure out what's wrong. I think it's quite the contrary. I think it's that we enjoy being in a community that supports us in the exploration and that supports us in our curiosity about what's happening and, how, and you know, did I, have I had a role in my own life? What's the common figure here? Oh, me. Um, and the other thing I'm thinking about is it's really easy and tempting to think that our habitual thoughts and the way that we think and, and all of that stuff, um, that it's carved in stone, right? It's a real convenient thing to, to, to say that it's carved in stone. You know, and we have lots of statements that justify this. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's just the way it is. Or I've always been that way. Well, first of all, you're not a dog. Second, it's not the way it is. And third, so what if you've always been that way? How's it working for you, right? How's that working for you? So Ernest Holmes wrote this in the textbook, and he's our founder of the Science of Mind. And he said, what we demonstrate today, tomorrow, and the next day is not as important as the tendency which our thought is taking. It's the tendency which our thought is taking, the dominant attitude of our mind. If everyday things are a little better, a little happier, a little more harmonious, a little more health-giving and joyous, if each day we are expressing more life, we're going in the right direction. Well, that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? It sounds reasonable, and it is. Ah, oh, but Sydney, I need my life to be better right here and right now. I know you do, I know. Yes, and if you and I interrupt, those habitual thoughts, those patterns of our thinking that have so held us and so engaged us and, and captivated us for so long by becoming curious, guess what? Life does get better right here and right now. Um, years ago, there was a book written by a guy and I, well, I love it. it. His purpose was to teach executives and business professionals how to 
disrupt their mode of thinking and to move away from their status quo thinking and how they were doing things, their approach, and move into, and, and which is, by the way, status quo is very secure, as we know. It's easy, it's comfortable, it's familiar. But he wanted them to move out of that, out of that whole way of thinking into a different way of thinking. He was writing this book so that everybody would begin to move out of their habits of lateral thinking. So lateral thinking just goes along. It just goes along. It's, it's, we go from A, we go to B, this is how we get there, and that's the whole drill, lateral thinking. Uh, the book's title was great. It was called A Whack on the Side of the Head <laughs> because it's about disrupting the thought, right? When you go along, it's like having a, that rubber band, you know, uh, you pull it and you go, oh, okay. And that was the idea, it was to, to disrupt that status quo thinking. When we disrupt the status quo of our own minds, we create space for something different. We create space for something different. And when I consider the ways to disrupt a pattern, to change something, to change a thought that's not serving me or the habits of a thought, I remember what John Lennon, and by the way, a whole lot of other people said, which was doing the same thing over and over again is, and expecting different results is the very definition of insanity. Yet how often do we do that? We do the same thing over and over again and hope it's gonna turn out different this time. If I date that guy, it's, I know it'll be different. I know it's been bad in the past, but, but really, I can change him. So, or if I do this job, even though I don't like it and I, and I don't wanna get into it, it'll be different this time. Something out here will happen. Something out here will change. Something, no, it won't. Because whatever is going on out here is absolutely a reflection of what is going on in here. And if we look at the behavior of people around us, our leaders, the politicians, influencers, they seem to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, don't you, right? It's pretty easy to see why the world feels crazy right now. It's really kind of easy. Because the thing is, we have to disrupt the crazy. We have to disrupt the crazy. What if we stopped attending the crazy and instead get curious about our own participation in our own lives. Disrupt the crazy, disrupt that lateral thinking. So here's a question you can use right now to disrupt the thinking that might have you hypnotized into believing that it's just the way it is, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, or I've always done it this way. Are you ready? So here's the question. What can I be grateful for right now? Right now. And you may be in a place where nothing is going on in your life, yet are you breathing? Are you hearing? Are you seeing? Are you, are you alive? What can I be grateful for right now? You know, the title of my talk is Marinating in Gratitude. Um, and I know that for myself, I have to find one thing, just one thing, because, so here's the thing, the feeling of gratitude is nonspecific. We can cultivate gratitude about something that has happened in the past and bring that feeling forward right here into where we are in this moment, in this time, in this experience, being grateful in all things, right? So that we begin to shift, we get that whack on the side of the head and we can disrupt what we have been doing in order to simply to change the neural pathways, to change, to shift that synapse that happens every time because those patterns go on, they go on, they go on, they go on. Until we do that, we're going to keep getting that. So we have to question it. We have to get curious about it and not with a sense of guilt, not with a sense of, of blame or, or regret or any of that, but just, wow, that's really interesting. I wonder how that happened. I wonder what my role is. Have I been thinking this, this, or this? Fascinating, I have. All right, interesting. So find one thing. So right now, just I want you to all take a moment. Find one thing, 
just think about one thing. I know that we all get to we all get told all the time to keep your gratitude list. Do it in the morning. Do it in the evening. And, all, and even that can become sort of a rote thing unless you're being extremely mindful and focused. But I just want everyone to just think of one thing right now. And if you're live streaming this, I just want you to think of one thing that you can be grateful for right now. And it can even be something that happened 20 years ago that you were grateful for. Think of one thing that you are grateful for. Has everybody got something? All right. If you're at home, speak it. Speak it so you hear it, so that you disrupt your dog. And if you're in this room, yell it out to me. Yell it out to me. Let me. What is that? This place. All right. What else? My health, good, more. Basketball, life. basketball. what is that? Ease in my life. The ease in your life, give me some more. Compassionate people, Compassionate people. lovely. Good health. good health, relationships. Good job. A good job, a new job, excellent, that's great. Any more? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> so take that thing and just Saturate yourself in the gratitude for it. I think chocolate is pretty awesome. Um, thanks, Doreen. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so just saturate it. Soak in it. Melt into that. Hold it. Hold it and feel it. And what, how grateful. Just what a delight that is. Now, come out of it. And go back about whatever you were thinking, like, gee, um, I wonder if Sydney's grateful for her shoes, which she is, because you know I, I like my shoes. Um, my one thing at this moment is this community. I love this place. I love I walk around here when I'm here during the week, and I'm going, oh, my God, I get to be here. This is so cool. It's so cool. So that's my one thing. Except, wait, it just changed. My family. Yeah, that's good. Oh, wait, I've got another one. Um, my cat. My dog, my home, my shoes, I said that already. Um, you know, once you start and you just start listing things without judging their importance or their significance, you know, does it have to be weighty and significant? No, it really doesn't. It can be pizza, it can be chocolate. Uh, you know, maybe you love your computer. Maybe it's because we have air conditioning in here. Thank you, God, we have air conditioning in here. Maybe it's a talent or a skill. Is it the way flowers smell in the morning? Is it oxygen? Maybe it's gravity. Maybe it's deodorant. What is it? Dental floss? All of these things, just find that one thing, because gravity is nonspecific. And we can take that sense of what it is, and we can soak in it. Last night in our class, we were coming up with synonyms for the word marinating as a topic, marinating and gravity. And we had people saying things like, you know, swimming and soaking and, and pickling. I thought, oh, that's great. I am pickled in, gravi in, in gravity, in, in gratitude. Well, I'm pickled in gravity, too. But to be able to come up with all these words that work for you, and I get that we're not always going to be able to marinate in gratitude. But you know what? We can take, just like we just did, and in laughter, by the way, we can do that for two minutes. We can do that for three minutes. We can do that for 30 seconds. Because it's that 30 seconds or that 10 seconds that disrupts what has happened and been happening for all of this time. Um, maybe it's a TV show you like. Anybody here binge West Wing like I do? Yeah? OK. Um, maybe it's your health. Maybe it's someone in your family who just received a diagnosis of you're clear, you're cancer free. Maybe it's someone in your family who didn't get that diagnosis, but you get to be with them and to love them through it. So I promise that if you will land on one thing, just one thing, and start to saturate your mind and your imagination, your imagination with how good that thing is, you will disrupt the neural pathways that have allowed you to create the beliefs that have you stuck that have you thinking, I can't get out of it, or how could I get into it? How would I, how, I, I'm just, I'm stuck, I'm a victim here, right? You know, the thing is, if you can do this for a moment, and then another moment, and then begin to string those moments together, guess what? That's a new thought pattern. That is the very definition of 
a whack on the side of the head because now you have created a new paradigm, a new possibility. When we string together moments of gratitude and a recognition that at least one thing is good and we're grateful for it, we are absolutely on our way out of feeling like we're stuck and we are on our way to feeling like we have power and we have choice. We're remembering that we have choice. Last night in class, we talked briefly about Viktor Frankl. You know, in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, he wrote of his realizations and discoveries and practice of personal choice and power while in a concentration camp during World War II. And he said a lot in that book, and it's powerful. And if you haven't read it, I want to suggest find it and read it. But here are two of the quotes, and it's something that I think you and I can draw from. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And then there was another one. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Get into it. You know, God always has a bigger idea. It's so seldom the perception that we have of the situation that we are in or the job or the relationship. But the moment we begin to say, God has a bigger idea, I'm willing to see this differently, then that is that opening. That is that opening that Rumi spoke of, that Leonard Cohen spoke of, because that's the crack where the light gets in. And spirit just needs a little, little opening to get in there and to begin to guide us in the ways to shift, to change, to open up, and to allow greater possibility, greater love, a greater awareness of who we are as divine creations, as divine beings. It's another quote from there. And it brings me back to that same story that I talked about. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. You and I have the capacity to invest and reinvest in our own lives. We can do that. We have that capacity. That's why we come here. That's why we come here during the week, why we come here on Sundays, why we take classes, because we are learning how to invest in our own lives, our own hearts, our own spirits. And yet every time we complain and marinate in our misery, we are divesting from our lives, and we are divesting from our own holiness. You know, I can find lots of reasons to criticize, to complain, to point fingers, and to stay stuck in frustration, but it doesn't make my life better, and it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me feel light and hopeful. It doesn't make me energized at all. And I really want to be happy. I want to be energized. I want to be filled with delight. I want to be excited to open my eyes in the morning. Anybody here want to feel that way? <laughs> yeah, I thought I wasn't alone. But, I think, but if I think that someone else is going to fix what I'm telling myself is wrong with my life, I'm kidding myself. I'm kidding myself. That's the thing about science of mind. I always used to hear that it's a do-it-yourself religion. And more, more than that, it's that we have agency. You and I have agency. We have the capacity to choose. We get to decide. We're not putting our, our destiny, our future, our fortune in somebody else's hands, in a God up there, or in some sort of intermediary that connects us and says, yes, go your way. You are forgiven of your sins. We don't do any of that. We connect with that God within, that presence that surrounds and fills us, that we are marinating in, that marinates in us so that we recognize our divinity and live from that. Sounds good, right? <laughs> the opening I find over and over again when I am stuck or wronged or feeling angry is to ask myself, where is gratitude? Where's the gratitude? Can I find some, some, some one thing? Can I find one thing to be grateful for? What can I look at that can begin to shift that mindset into I don't know what this is. Why do I do that? <laughs> That's fascinating, isn't it? Who are you? Um, but <laughs> where is my gratitude? <laughs> you know, it's about gratitude. Pink fairy dust, unicorns, and magical thinking aside, the real magic is in us. It's in us because we have that capacity. We have that power. We have this transformational gift of feeling and expressing 
if only to ourselves and to our dogs and our cats or when we're in our car, we have that ability to transform it all by anchoring into gratitude. And if we are willing, and sometimes you've heard me say, sometimes it's, I am willing to be grateful. Oh, not there yet. I'm willing to be willing to be grateful. I'm willing to be willing to think about being willing to be grateful. Okay, I'm willing to consider what willingness might be like to be willing to, and you might have to go several, <laughs> several steps down the line before there's an opening. That's okay. That's, that's the opening. That's all it takes. Gratitude for just one thing, even and maybe especially in times of challenge, suffering and, and, and pain, provides that opening to your own inner magic of purpose and meaning. So this week, let your purpose be gratitude. Decide that your meaning is so much more than trying to find ways to not be frustrated. Raise the bar. Just raise the bar on that, right? You know, what is the meaning in life? Well, to, you know, survive and not be pissed off all the time. Well, okay, that's a start, but can we raise the bar? Can we raise the bar? Okay, joy. I would like to find some joy. Three seconds of joy. Okay, great. That's, that's awesome. Three seconds. Now let's move it up to six seconds, maybe even ten. That's what we want to do. Gratitude, as, as I like to think, is, it greases the skids. You know, it is that thing that opens us up to considering other possibilities. It opens us up to guidance, to that thing which, yes, the dream that we want, the joy that we want, the reward that we want, that, that celebration and delight that we want, because now we're not blocked like this with that anger and that rage and frustration. Now we're like, oh, okay, I am opening up. I am opening up. I am reaching out. That's where that power comes in. Decide this week that your meaning is going to be found in the magic words of that mailman in Buffalo. If I can't get out of it, I'll get into it. If I can't get out of it, I'll get into it. Get into your own life. Get into your own life. Get into your own capacity for praise, curiosity, and a new way of thinking. Get into that infinite power and presence that animates every cell in your body. It grows every hair on your head and is the root synapse for every thought you think. You're not just saturated in God, you're marinating in it. I'm going to share one brief quote from Wayne Muller. I don't know if any of you have read any of his books. Um, this one is from A Life of Being, Having, and Doing Enough. And he writes, make no mistake. Gratitude does not come swiftly or easily, nor does it in any way erase the searing grief of loss, the pain or the fury at injustice. It merely invites something beautiful, fresh, and new to grow and flourish right beside it. Let's do that. Let's pray. <sighs> we breathe into this awareness of simply knowing that we can let go. That we can let go of anything and all of it that has held us, appeared to hold us locked in a place of frustration, in a place of, of fear, a place of blame, whatever it is, realizing that surrender isn't about giving up, it's opening up. So we surrender now into that idea, that knowing, that true recognition that there is one infinite loving presence and power. It is God, the good, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. It is that spirit, that mind, that intelligence, that brilliance, that radiance that has created and sustains all life which is responsible for the planets in their orbits. And by the way, new galaxies being discovered even this week. New galaxies, new stars, new possibilities. That is what we are of, in, and marinating in. And it is that which informs, guides, directs, and absolutely defines and divines each and every one of us. 
I know that I am one of it. I am, um, I am part of it. And I know that for everyone here, and I know it for everybody who's watching, I know it for everybody on this planet that we are uh, co-creators with God. We are partners with the divine. So we up and up now, collectively, to the deeper, fabulous, dazzling awareness that right where we are, God is, life is, possibility is, spirit is, intelligence is, love is, gratitude is. And we let that be the light that guides us, that informs us, that marinates us. And as we marinate in that sense of thanksgiving and gratitude just for the little things, the big things, whatever they are, just for taking a breath, we extend that feeling and we see that it goes beyond us. It, it moves out in waves and ripples, touches the person sitting next to us, the per person sitting in front of us, behind us, goes beyond the doors of the sanctuary to this community, radiating good, radiating wholeness on every level. It circulates, comes back and continues and goes out again and absolutely is that which is mm, embracing this entire planet. And particularly, we know and we let this gratitude, this joy, this love, this possibility, this greater idea of the divine, the harmony, the right action of life be that which is the government of Ukraine. It is that which governs Ukraine. It is that which governs Russia. It is that which governs this country. It is that which governs this planet. For God is the infinite presence and power, all, all wisdom, all knowing, all love. And it absolutely shines brighter than everything else and all is dissolved in love's presence. So as we surrender and open up to this love, I know that we are all blessed. Our own lives express that wholeness, whether in our health, in our relationships, our finances. We know that we are part of that divine order. We are that harmony. We are the delight. We are the wholeness of God. And we are hot stuff. So we celebrate that. And as we celebrate it for ourselves, I invite you to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so I bless this church. I bless all churches, all paths to God, be it mosque, ashram, cathedral, temple, all paths to God, all paths to God knowing that the light is on, we are present, and right where we are, God is, and yes, all is well. I release this word into law, knowing it is done. And so it is, and together we say, Amen.
And this is, you know, we are giving of ourselves. The energy of life itself is represented in this. So I invite you to take your offering, and if it's something that you do online or you're going to call later and, and give a pledge to, or rather a credit card to Doreen, I invite you to take that idea and hold it in your hand and then place your hand to your heart and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Amen. Darius Lux. Yes. You can find Darius at DariusLux.com. His music is on Apple Music. It's on Spotify and Pandora. And you can find out all about him on his website. So we make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number and QR code are on your programs. Or, sorry, there's a bug right here. He wants to get involved or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen, Meditation 650, service 7 o'clock. Join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on the topic, Prosperity Requires Forgiveness. Mm. I don't know, maybe he may want to run another direction next week. <laughs> <clears throat> Shea Ernest, French dinner. Join Dr. Mark for a fabulous French dinner, decadent desserts, and wonderful entertainment this Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. on the church patio. Tickets are available online for $40 each. It's a bargain. Love and Kindness Ministry, lunch in the park. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be serving lunch to people who are homeless and others this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. To support this ministry, contact Gilda Gomez through our website. Circle of Healing, this Sunday, July 17th at 1.15 p.m. in person and on Zoom. Join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart as she gently guides you via your chakras in a loving healing experience. The Zoom link can be found on our website under the Circle of Healing information. Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door, workshop with Reverend Sidney Steen. Saturday, July 23rd, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., in person only, cost is $40. I don't know why I felt like ACDC should be playing when I was making that <laughs> announcement, but uh, sign up on our website for this powerful workshop where you'll learn how to move gracefully through change into renewed and abundant life please bring a sack lunch seems like there's a theme going on you know i feel it i feel that theme that prosperity and eating yes. all together zoom virtual patio 
before and after Sunday and Wednesday services, Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. And finally, visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all of our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Okay, dokie. Um, our book sale is still on, by the way. And so we invite you, I, right now I know those books are covered, but you can be bold and lift up those covers and see if there's something you want. Um, because we really, 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 really want them gone. <laughs> our, our mantra is circulate, release. And they've been stored in our Ernest Holmes room since well before COVID. And I have, I have to tell you that I have pledged to everybody in, in in the office and all of our practitioners that they will not be going back in the Ernest Holmes room. If I have to stand there like this in front of the door, we will not be taking So please buy our books. And I think that's all I need to say. Let's, um, let's finish this thing up. I'm going to give a quick, thank you, God. We are grateful that we are here. And I know that each of us is blessed. We are protected. We move forth in love and enjoy open hearted and absolutely Blessed, guided, and guarded. And so it is. Amen. Take it.